What's up, Tailgaters? You're in the booth with Tailgate Nate today. Welcome to my channel. Champ Week is here. A lot of big games going on in the championship world, and we're going to be starting with a game that's going to go down in history as, look, a really, really good game nonetheless, but also the last game that ever had that Pac-12 symbol by it. It's the Pac-12 championship from Las Vegas, Nevada. The Oregon Ducks and Washington Huskies will renew once again this season after the instant classic in Seattle, and the winner of this one probably goes on to the college football playoff in fact it's almost a certainty the winner goes to the college football playoff and the winning quarterback probably gives himself that much better of a chance to go in the Heisman Trophy. We'll talk everything Ducks and Huskies in a little bit, but before we do that, you guys know I got to say thank you for all the support the channel has seen as of late. As of recording this video, so close to 1,700 subscribers. If you guys could help me get there, hey, that would be awesome, but there are more ways than, than you, uh, that you could help support the channel than simply by hitting the subscribe button, which is a big way to help me, but it's not the only way. Pretty much everything you do to interact with the channel helps to support it, so liking, commenting, sharing, and even simply by watching the video. That's a huge way to help support me and whatever you guys are willing and able to do I greatly appreciate but let's dive on in to championship week predictions and we're starting out with possibly the biggest one of this week and the game taking place on Friday in Las Vegas the Oregon Ducks and Washington Huskies hey it was an instant classic when these two teams met in Seattle and it's sure to be another good one when these two teams meet again in the Pac-12 championship so let's dive on into the statistics that both of these teams have put up throughout the regular season this year now the the rankings again I, I say this in every video i record on tuesday don't get too upset if you're watching this video on wednesday or thursday or even friday before the, the game starts and you see that those rankings are wrong i re record it with the college football playoff rankings that are available to me as of recording and as of recording this video uh the new college football playoff rankings have not come out yet so that's why the numbers may be a little bit different to what you guys see them as now but Regardless, let's start with the offense of both teams. And we're going to start with the offense of the Oregon Ducks. Usually I go offense, defense, offense, defense. I want to go offense, offense today because these are just two very, very dynamic offenses. And when you take a look at the Oregon Ducks offense, I mean, they're led by one of the best quarterbacks in the nation, and that is Bo Nix. To think that Bo Nix is where he is now after so many people, not myself, but so many people discounted him at Auburn and a lot of people thought that he just wasn't uh, all that great I mean he's in the Heisman Trophy conversation 3,906 yards and his touchdown to interception ratio almost flawless 37 touchdowns to only two interceptions and you know what his offensive line yeah they're pretty good too they've only allowed Bo Nix to be sacked five times uh, that in part is due to Oregon having a really strong run game there as well with Bucky Irving Je and Jesse James, uh, those two guys have combined for 20 touchdowns, give them 10 apiece on the ground. And then we know Bo Nix can get outside of the pocket and run if he has to, doesn't really do it a whole lot, but if he has to, will do it. And he's got two really good options in the wide receiver room, right? Uh, Troy Franklin and Tez Johnson are some of the best in the business. A 1,300 yard season for Franklin and a near 1,000 yard season here for Johnson. And they have 23 touchdowns combined between those guys there get 14 to Franklin and nine to Johnson this is an offense that moves on the ground through the air however you want to call it uh, they're also one of the best third down offenses in the entire country Oregon's probably got the best offense in the entire country and they've shown it all year long Washington, meanwhile, they also have one of the best offenses in the country. Now, it might not be as statistically impressive as what the Oregon Ducks have been putting up, specifically in a certain department that I'll talk about later. But, hey, look, Michael Penix, still one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. 3,899 yards, so not that far off. Uh, him and Bo Nix are literally only seven yards apart in that department. 32 touchdowns and eight interceptions for Penix. The, the, the interception numbers have been a little problematic for him at, at times, but for the most part, Michael Penix, very reliable quarterback, and he also is in the Heisman Trophy conversation. He's got a really good wide receiver room uh, to his own as well. Rome Adunze is a 1,300-yard receiver. Give him 13 touchdowns. Jalen Polk is there, 943 yards and eight touchdowns for him. And then you have a slew of other weapons back there. Bernard McMillan, the tight end... Westover and so many other options that can be dynamic for this Husky team and Dylan Johnson the running back has really started to find his rhythm has 12 touchdowns on the air again had that breakout game against the 
USC and has really started to find that rhythm. He's a near thousand yard rusher for this season. But where these two offenses differ, and look, Washington's offensive line also really good at protecting Penix and not, and not letting Penix get on the ground. But what differs between these two, uh, uh, oh, and, and Washington also good on third down. So now for the third time, what differs between these two offenses is when you take a look at the stat that says TO. That means turnovers. Oregon does not turn the football over. Six, uh, six turnovers on the air. That's uh, four interceptions on uh, the season, but only two of them, of course, coming from Bo Nix, and then two fumbles on the season. That is it. And then when you take a look at Washington, it is a different story. As far as picks, well, you have the eight from Michael Penix, one to Dylan Moore. One to Dylan Morris, that's nine picks. And then you throw in seven fumbles there as well. Turnovers have been a problem for this Washington team. And when you take a look back at some of the results this year that have been a little too close for comfort, turnovers have definitely been a reason why uh, Washington has not won as dynamic or really struggled more than they should have against some of their, uh, 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 I'll say, more inferior opponents, at least when you compare them to Washington. And then when you when you look at these two defenses, statistically, the, 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 these are also two very def two very different defenses defenses the Oregon defense very very good statistically they're a really good r r rush defense they turn the football over they create pressure they are really really good on uh, third down this Oregon defense has been really really good all season long the sack production doesn't just come from one or two guys either it comes from all over the field the secondary has 53 passes defended and 10 picks this year uh, the, the, their secondary is loaded it's really really good uh, and this is an Oregon defensive front that again you not see only with the sack numbers but with their rush defense as well is one of the best in the country the Washington defense however little bit of a different story this is a Washington defense that when you take when you take a look at it really has a hard time being able to stop some certain things again sorry I don't know what's going on I got a little frog in my throat I guess but they do force turnovers 17 percent you but you'd like to or not 17 percent 17 turnovers on the year but you'd like to see them be a little bit more efficient on third down they're allowing opponents to uh get 40 percent of their third down conversions and yes they do provide some uh, some really good pressure there as well, but they allow almost 400 yards per game. They allow teams to score almost 23 points per game, but this defense has a very, very unique, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a skill, but it has a very, very unique knack for being able to grind out wins. And by that, I mean, when the defense is needing to step up, the defense steps up and it d delivers. That's something that Washington has seen all season long. Let's dive on into my what to watch for. It's your keys to the game. Just some things I think you should keep an eye on while you're paying attention to this one. We are going to start with the designated road team here. That is the Oregon Ducks. The Huskies are going to be bound to be aggressive in this game. They are. Michael Penix is going to need to take a lot of shots downfield uh, in order to beat this Oregon defense. Dylan Johnson may have a tough time uh, being able to get going on the ground. I'll talk more about that later. But if Dylan Johnson can get going on the ground, Michael Penix is hitting the deep shots. <clears throat> Again, my apologies. We'll take a quick water break. Water's important. Stay hydrated. But the Huskies are going to be aggressive, not only offensively, but defensively. Oregon's got to be able to prepare for that. And if Washington comes out swinging, well, we know this Oregon team can match them, but how do they match them? That is a big thing, right? And look, again, I said that the winner of this game, the quarterback is probably going to have a pretty decent shot to go on to win the Heisman Trophy. I think Knicks has yet to really have that Heisman moment. There is really yet to be a game where Oregon has found themselves down and they needed Bo Nix to be able to step up. Texas Tech may very well have been it, but at least in Pac-12 play, there hasn't really been that shocker besides the Washington game, right? And Bo Nix looked really good at in that game, if Washington finds themselves up early, I think Bo Nix is going to have some Heisman moments here in this game. He's a playmaker. He's an absolute dude. He doesn't turn the football over. I think Bo Nix is going to have some Heisman ready plays here in this game. But the thing that I'm really curious about with Oregon is you have to limit the turnovers. Now, in their previous meeting in Seattle, they did not turn the football over once. In fact, you take a look at that box score. Uh, they pretty much controlled it. We'll talk more about that box score in 
a minute, but what I do want to highlight from that box score right now is the turnovers, right? And uh, again, Oregon didn't have any turnovers in that game, but they were 0 for 3 on fourth down, and two of those came inside Washington, or, or, or I should say came inside the red zone. So uh, being able to capitalize and be, being able to get points when you're down there, going for it on fourth and goal, fourth and three, whatever it may be, you have to be able to to capitalize on that, you have to limit those turnover on downs in this matchup in Vegas. We'll move over to the Washington Husky side of things. Penix cannot let the interception bug show. Again, there have been times this year where Michael Penix has been very prone to throwing picks. Can't happen here. This is an Oregon offense that is too good. It's a Washington defense that, especially as of late, has struggled too much for Washington to be able to win the game uh, if Washington loses the turnover battle. So Penix, not only Penix, but also these wide receivers and Dylan Johnson. You have to take care of the football. No interceptions, no fumbles. You cannot lose the turnover battle here. Now, look, they did against Oregon and in the last time and they still won but i don't think that re I, I i don't think that formula can take place again if you're washington might as well just go ahead and win the turnover battle and i talked about the wide receivers and dylan johnson they're being able to hold on to the football the wide receivers will be great they've been great all year adunze polk they're gonna have their, their moments and Penix is gonna be able to hit some deep shots he's gonna be able to hit the crossing routes but it might be a little bit of a struggle for Dylan Johnson. Again, this is a really good Oregon defensive front. So interested to see how Dylan Johnson attacks this group. Now, this is an offense, this is an offensive line that's really started to find it in run blocking as well. They've really started to be able to open up holes for Dylan Johnson to be able to run through. And Dylan Johnson has started to find his stride as well that needs to continue here against the really really stout oregon defensive front but defensively for washington i think this is where the key lies for the huskies in this matchup the defense has to stay consistent and it has to contain bo nix now is that going to happen all day long no you'd be out of your mind to say that you need to contain bo nix on every single play but you need to limit what he's able to do with this offense you need to be able to limit the wide receivers be able to limit bo nix's ability to take some shots down the field but the defense has to stay consistent it has to come out swinging it has to be hard hitting it's got to be able to slow down oregon uh, i'm probably gonna say uh on at least one out of every three drives if you can do that maybe even one out of every two three out of every five whatever have you that, that, that that's going to because you're not going to stop oregon all day long that is just not going to happen with the way the washington defense plays with the way that the oregon offense rolls just not going to happen you got to be able to find that happy medium you got to be able to force uh some turnovers be able to force some negative plays there as well but let's go ahead and let's take a look at the box score from their last game in Seattle, right? Total yards, Oregon outgained Washington 541 to 415. Third downs, well, th that was a a another story where Oregon dominated. 10 of 16 on third down, 5 of 11 for Washington on third down. Where it came down to was those fourth down conversions where Dan Landing decided, hey, I'm going to go for it. They were 0 for 3 on fourth down. And then, of course, at the end of of regulation just happened to be a missed field goal uh, that cost Oregon a shot to send that game to overtime and potentially go here and win that game. Uh, and Oregon led the time of possession battle there as well. I think it's going to be a very similar story here. I do think Oregon's going to be able to outgain Washington. It's just because I think Oregon's offense is better, and I think Washington's defense has struggled a lot as of late. I think Oregon is going to win the turnover battle. I think Oregon will be aggressive there and unlike what happened in seattle if they decide to go for it on some fourth downs i do believe that they're going to end up getting their chances to be able to get some points out of it and i just think oregon is the better team overall lots of credit to what washington's been able to do this has been a phenomenal season for the huskies but i do not think that the huskies are going to be able to, to survive oregon for a second time this season washington will cover that nine and a half point spread but i think oregon maybe gets out to or i think washington gets out to an early lead but the oregon ducks and bo nicks will rally they will create some turnovers they will get the extra possessions they need and oregon wins the pac-12 championship and they will be heading on to the college football playoff at least that's what i have to say say about it i'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it in the comment section below but hey till next time remember to play hard but tailgate harder i'll see all you guys later when we predict the sec title game later today goodbye